The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. I want to wish a very happy birthday to one of my dear friends over in Denmark, Fleming Danielson. Today is 45 years old. God bless you, my son, and keep those fires burning. I'll come over and see you one of these days. We're going to have a very special guest for the first time today. Andrew Pencholi from F Study for the Foundation for the Study of Cycles will be our guest today, and then he'll be on a week from today discussing some of his work in cycles. So I think you're going to enjoy it very much. Tomorrow we will have Tim Bost, one of the one of the guys that's always in the Timer Digest he, and one of our frequent uh, visitors here. He will be on tomorrow at uh, 9.30 from Cycles, from Financial Cycles Weekly out of uh, Sarasota, Florida. Now, I have uh, sent the two charts that we watch every week. is the DAX and then also the FTSE to see where we are, and we'll, we'll see how that uh, works out at the end of the day. But they should be in some type of a, of a topping mode in here. The Fed is in today, as they were yesterday. Folks, the news after the close last night reminded me of 2000, uh, the dot-com bubble. I had not seen that type of explosive move in these things. I mean, Tesla was up $125 a share. Um, Facebook was up 12%, up, to, up $25, 30 a share. Microsoft was up 10 Microsoft up 10%. That's a lot of money, folks. <laughs> and then Google was up $100 uh, also. Uh, in fact, the Microsoft... Uh, broke and Apple was up too. Uh, many of these broke the ABCD patterns and I put a lot of effort in thinking that was going to be, you know, the uh, top of the market. And of course, I was wrong because we went higher yesterday. And but we did we did shatter those. Now they've backed off a little bit this morning, as you can see. The market's backed off a little bit, but let's look at what I think was the most important thing from number wise. If you like numbers, yesterday uh, in the Nasdaq, and this was after the close. Remember, we had a whole bunch of stuff coming out, and it was really if you followed after the close, I was literally shocked to see where those prices were. If you'll notice here that we uh, went up to the, we got to 91.18, folks. That was a 78% level. I believe the high was 91.30, uh, I believe. So it went a little bit higher on a fast tick and then immediately came down, but hit right up to that level, which was interesting. And, and the only way you can do that is with those big stocks like Microsoft, Apple, and, uh, you know, Facebook, uh, Google, Amazon, all of them, you know, Google, it, it really Really didn't do anything, you know. App, <laughs> shut up, Larry. Facebook made a pretty much of a double top. I don't know what's going to happen, folks. All I know, I know one thing, and I'll get this up here and uh, let you get a look at it right here. Here is the cash S and P 500. I'll tell you a little story behind this. Okay, here's uh, there's where we were at the time yesterday. Uh, we were trading at 93.21, which was the 61% um, retracement of the whole move down. The high of the day was. 294.84, and I had my finger on the button to send out a sell signal to everyone, and I said, well, maybe I better not do that. And so just as I was doing that, I got a phone call, folks, from someone that I haven't spoken to in 15 years, uh, going back to my Drexel days. It's, well, it's been at least 15 years. Uh, he Everybody knows who this guy is, and I'm not going to tell you who it is because he asked me not to do it, but he, he called me to tell me. He said, you know, I listened to the show. He said, I listened to the archives at TFNN. I said, you got to be kidding me. And I said, no. He said, I, I really enjoy it. Anyway, he's quite he's getting elderly now, and uh, but you know who he is. Uh, but uh, it was really funny because we started chatting and he said, uh, look, he said, I still have cougar ants and maple leaves that you bought for me back in 19, you know, 78 and 79. And uh, he said, I still have them. And uh, he, he had over 100, which was that's quite a bit. And he asked what he should do with them. And I said, well, I, I know you don't need the money. I said, oh, you know, how many grandkids do you have now? And I think he said five. And I said, well, just, you know, give them to them, you know, give them the actual coins. Don't give them the cash. 
because they'll they'll think more of their you know great grandpa giving them coins than they will that and tell them not to sell them. You know, just hold on and see what's going to go on. And I said, "Oh, well, that's good." But hey, that that really made my day. And right after talking to him, right after talking to him, I sent out the signal that I thought, you know, we should sell it there at that level. And whether it works or not, I don't know. I put the stop at break even now to see if it's going to work or not. But we'll we'll see what's going on, folks. Let's talk about gold for just a second, okay? Because uh, there's a lot of things happening in gold that we don't discuss very much. Uh, I get my hats off to. Steve Rhodes, because he does talk to you folks about this occasionally, and that is when you price these gold. No, he's far more. He's he's far more. He's far more uh, than uh, <laughs> he's far more uh, uh, famous than Mortimer Randolph Dukes. I can promise you that. Okay, let's get up here and take a look here. You'll see here from the. You see the high back there in 2011. In the the this is the gold based in euros. So you look at look what's happened. We had this. Exp- Explosive blow off. Now look, look at that volume, folks, that we had just a few weeks ago, about six or seven weeks ago, when we got the gold down to a fourteen seventy five, and uh, you know that's a that's a heck of a move. You know that's a, you know these are these are huge moves. Now let's look at it again. Uh, we'll look at it in uh, in in the yen. Look at the yen. How how what the move is in the yen here. It's just absolutely phenomenal. Hold on just a second here. Clarence Beeks is in his cage on his way to Africa. Let's get back here. You'll see uh, this is a huge move here. And so gold's had an incredibly explosive move here. We haven't only, let's just do one thing at a time here because I want to do the other. Let's do the last one, which is the British pound is still pretty good too. So the people that are buying them in those currencies, you know, they have, uh, and they held it all the time, you know, done pretty well. But look, if you did it with the U.S. dollar, all we've been able to do here is to um, look at the uh, gold in relation to uh, where it's been and where it's going. And this, give me one second here to put it up here. I just did the, uh, here it is right here, one second. See, all we've been able to do in the gold market is to, uh, make a 78% level. Now, stop and think, all those other currencies, you know, they shattered those uh, levels from August of 2011. So I that's why I'm a little bearish on the gold. That's basically what I'm watching. And so that's what I, that's my, uh, it's my theory, and I'm sticking to it. Let's look at one other thing here. Uh, on, I wanted to show you gold on a shorter term basis. Okay, this is what we uh, we almost made this last night. We missed it by about two bucks. Uh, as that high up there on that little garden, we only got up to 37, and I was looking for about 41, and then it's uh, you know backed off back to about 17, 14 again. But it's not looking good. And silver still looking not very good. You know, it's uh, be able you know see what's doing it. I, I don't know what I mean. Al Franken is in, indeed in his cage. I, Al Franken wasn't he a uh, wasn't he a representative from whatever it was? Uh, huh, I don't know. Remember that anyway. Okay, uh, Jim Belushi was uh, Al Franken was. I don't remember that. Who? What? What? What did he play? Yeah. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. TFNN is launching an open house for our Tiger's Den. For a limited time, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Tiger's Den. Just enter promo code OPEN at checkout and pay nothing for 30 days while you try out your Tiger's Den membership as part of our open house. With market volatility at an all-time high and people all over the world working from home if possible, TFNN is hosting an open house in our Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is an interactive chat room that runs all day where other tigers and tigresses discuss trading ideas with the hosts and members along with charts and current market news as well as live access to the charts the hosts use during their programs join us for the tiger's den open house begin your den membership today by just entering open at checkout and pay nothing while you try things out for 30 days for all the details and to start your den membership today visit the front page of tfnn.com don't miss out on the tfnn tiger's den open house taking place now sign up today Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I've put up a chart here of crude oil going back to 1861 when I first started trading, that right there when the Civil War started. You can see they had a big run-up in the Civil War era. So that was a little bit before automobiles and airplanes. And then it had a little bit of a sell-off from 1861 all the way down into the time when OPEC was founded in the early 60s by Arm & Hammer out of Los Angeles. Then we had the, uh, the Yom Kippur War, if you remember that. We had the Iranian... Uh, revolution. That's where we uh, had, you know, gas prices were, oh, I forget how much they were, but it was a lot. And then we had the big sell-off that uh, happened after the uh, Iraq war in uh, Desert Storm. And then we had the big run-up where Goldman Sachs uh, said oil was going to go to $200 a barrel. And then we've come all the way back down to minus $37 a barrel. But frankly, the actual price would have been around $6 based on the uh, June contract. And you can see here uh, in 2020 what's happened. And frankly, folks, if these oil prices stay down at this level, it is going to have some huge Huge sociological problems in Saudi Arabia and in Iran and also in Russia because they rely so much on the price of oil. What's amazing to me is the price of gasoline has only dropped about uh, 25 or 30 cents uh, a gallon here. We only we pay a dollar 83 here and. Um, in Tucson. I know California, the taxes on it are more than that, but uh, the price of gasoline is not dropped and people are, you know, not many people are driving. We can tell, you know, when we do go out here uh, to get our gr groceries and stuff that uh, people are, you know, practicing social distancing and stuff. But I will tell you this, this is my two cents worth. Let me jump up on my soapbox for a second. I think this darn thing, when they go back and look at history, is going to be one of the biggest scams they've ever perpetrated on us, folks. I know it's bad, and I know some people have dead, died, and when you die, that's really bad. But by golly, for what we've had to give up to what's going on, it ain't worth it. You know, we're giving up freedoms that we're probably never going to get back. You know, we've destroyed the uh, we've destroyed so many industries, the restaurant industry, the, the theater industry. Uh, you know, basically the travel industry is decimated. The, the stock, you know, the uh, unless you own a Tesla, things are doing pretty good. But uh, it's truly amazing, you know, what's really happened. I noticed now that on the on the uh, the advertisements now they're selling masks now for two dollars a piece. Uh, 
Uh, these are masks that you could have bought for 40 cents at CVS just uh, you know, back in early November, December before this all happened. So we'll see what's going in. I love that with Donald Sutherland. I mean, oh my gosh, that you know, I watched that movie uh, back in 1957, and I, I actually I was I started college the next year, but I actually had I had. Um, uh, nightmares over that movie. That was such an amazing movie. I still, uh, when it ever does come on, I go in and watch it because it was really, really good. I, I really enjoyed it very much. Of course, ancient astronaut theory says yes, it could happen. Okay, another one, of course, was Soylent Green with uh, uh, Carlton Heston was also a very good one here. We're going to have uh, Andrew Pancoli coming on, and he's really good. Uh, the thing. He's really, really smart guy. And uh, Andrew actually knows my friend, uh, Mr. AZ, over in the UK uh, that does the work on uh, the Federal Reserve and all this other stuff. Okay, we have a question that someone has asked us about, and I am going to bring up the chart. Give me one second, and I will have it for you. And it is, where are you? Where are you? Oh, dear, I do this, and, you know, I, I can't find the darn thing. What did I do with it? Oh, shucks. Oh, here it is. This was the bottom of the 2009 market. Hold on one second. They asked me the uh, the question, you know, why was I so bullish back then? And the reason why, there was a three-drive-to-a-bottom pattern, okay? And it was, uh, there was so much astrological stuff. This was the Bradley model, which, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But the... Um, I'm going to start using again just to because it does short term it does pretty good too but that that just had everything there and we were setting right there that was the Dow Jones the Dow Jones was at 6400 um, and that was a 61 percent retracement off of the low from uh, I believe it was from uh, 2000 and no, from 1987 I believe. Uh, and it was, you know, just pretty much spot on and, you know, just said this look, I was going to do it. I said, we're probably going to have a rally that the best one we've had in many years. But that's nothing more than a three drive pattern, folks. I watch those three drive patterns because they really do work. I mean, Linda Ratsky calls them three little Indians. But look at the uh, if you just look at the this is the S&P. Look at the high way back here. And if you remember uh, this is when the S and P was trading at 33.90. We were. This is the cash S and P, but we have a three drive to a top pattern there. And uh, if you blew it up, you could see it a lot easier. But to get it on here, you gotta. You can't expand it too much. But that's the same pattern that you're looking at here. And we we see these happening. You know, they don't work all the time. But by golly, when they do, you have to pay pretty close attention to these things. Michelle, I'm going to have the Bradley tomorrow. I've got a meeting this morning with uh, John. Uh, uh, John and Howard Arrington and Ensign to do a couple things for me uh, that I've got to uh, get get straight. And one of them is the uh, Bradley model, and we'll be able to uh, you know be able to get up to date with that. So that's another one. Okay, now I don't know what you mean. Uh, well, what you, you can always tell when a three drive to a bottom pattern fails, folks, is it just keeps dropping. So you buy it at drive three. And that's usually a 1.27 or 1.618 expansion. And if you go beyond 1.618, you are flat out wrong. That's that's uh, that's what you have to do. You just got to move on and do the next one. That's that's all it happens to be. The reason why I sent that thing out yesterday on the S&P is I was looking at that, and I had three phone calls from uh, students and people here at TFNN that listened to the show and asked me if I was selling that Gartley. And I was looking at it, and I said, yeah, you know, it's here, I got the Fed in here. I got it. You know, what am I going to have to do? And I looked at that, and then I remembered. You know, I built my whole career on that pattern, and. Uh you know, I do a lot of pattern recognition, but the whole thing changed for me with that back in 1975. So if I can't do it now, I can't do it at all. And so I did it, and then I see the news coming out. Oh, my God, I saw the prices running. I mean, the, the NASDAQ jumped 130, stopping right at the 786, by the way. And the S&P didn't do much. It rallied a little bit. I think it rallied 30 handles, which isn't really very much. But uh, I don't know what's going to happen. All I know is if we go above that high 
yesterday, you know, uh, it's probably going to go a whole lot higher. But uh, that's the way it looks right now. That's a perfect pattern. I remember waiting for that pattern way back in 1975 in March, and I said, son of a gun, it was in soybean oil, but that's what it was. Okay. Okay, well, that's good. All right, let's move on. To, uh, oh, we're going to have a break coming up pretty soon. We're going to have Andrew on, and we'll have we're we're just going to be chatting today, folks. He's going to talk to us about the renovation and re rebirth of the foundation for the study of cycles that used to be in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, when we had Edward Dewey and Gertrude Shirk. I got to know. Gertrude relatively well after Mr. Dewey had passed away. And I remember that uh, the only time I met Mr. Dewey, uh, he said that uh, to always think about astrology. And at that time, I thought he was playing two French fries short of a Happy Meal. We'll be right back with Andrew Piccoli out of London, England. Larry Pesavento watches the markets 24-7, and now is a great time to try out his daily trading service, Fibonacci 24-7. Larry publishes videos and charts for subscribers throughout the week when warranted, and every weekend he puts out a thorough report covering worldwide markets, futures, commodities, and currencies with Fibonacci retracement levels, possible trading setups and zones, and stops and targets for all recommendations included. Larry applies the principles he's developed developed over decades of trading while analyzing a variety of markets for subscribers. To see for yourself the types of videos, charts, and analysis that Larry provides for his subscribers, sign up for Fibonacci 24-7 today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. You'll also gain instant access to Larry's archive subscriber webinar from earlier this year. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, and we're back, and we have a special guest for the first time, Andrew Pancholi out of London, England. Andrew, are you there? Larry, thank you for having me on your show. Good morning to you there. Well, thank you so much. Good afternoon to you. 
uh, Andrew, tell us who you are and uh, what you're doing with the Foundation for the Study of Cycles. And then, folks, we're going to have Andrew on next week, uh, on a week from today, where he's going to be showing some of his own work that he does, and he's quite famous in his own right. So why don't you tell us about the Foundation, you know, what's been happening over the evolution uh, the last few years, ever since David passed away. So uh, just go right ahead, my friend. Sure. Well, thank you. Uh, well, first of all, the foundation is back. Uh, we'd like to say the phoenix has risen from the ashes. We're back under the leadership of uh, Dr. Richard Smith, who uh, many of you will be familiar with, uh, who's done a fantastic job. Um, cl clearly, after the uh, sad passing of David, um, Richard uh, and a team of us got together to uh, uh, resolve the outstanding issues, and we've brought the foundation back. And the first point is it's now back as a 5013C, as a nonprofit. And uh, our aim really is to get it out there to, to help people understand cycles, not only in markets, uh, obviously, but uh, but also, you know, we want to resurrect a lot of the work that uh, Edward Dewey did. And uh, now is a great time because if we look at the history of the foundation, it was um, really started back in 1941 under the leadership of Dewey, who was the chief economist. And the purpose of it was really that to see if they could find a reason um, to pr uh, that for why the Great Depression occurred and if they could really work that out and see if they could prevent further depressions. Well, that's exactly 90 years ago. And uh, so here we are 90 years down the road, we are heading into this, we've had this uh, stock market top, you know, 1929 plus 90 years take us to 2019. We just went through it by a few weeks. But what so uh, very few people realize is that if you go back another 90 years, You'll go all the way back to 1839, and there was a big top in 1837 with a depression all the way through to um, um, 1842. So these things clearly move in cycles, and that's the message we really want to get out there. So Richard uh, has got a great team together. Uh, there'll be some names that you know well, like Bill Sarubis will come on board. Uh, he's literally on the board, Jake Bernstein, uh, several other people, Lars Fontinen from Germany. We're getting it all together. We want to educate people about uh, what this is all about. And uh, what I'd really like to mention is that this Saturday, we are having uh, our first sort of uh, webinar. Well, Jake did a couple uh, a few months ago, but we're really launching now. And we've got a new website up uh, at uh, cycles.foundation. That's www.cycles.foundation. And if you put a forward slash and add webinar, you can come and join us. And in that webinar, we're going to look at the long term market cycles. We're going to look at um, some of the cycles that, that have led to uh, the COVID-19 virus as well. And you'll see how clearly these cycles repeat. So this is all the sort of information we want to get out there. But we also want to encourage uh, really the uh, the submission of this work. We're going to look at uh, we're going to revamp the stuff on weather forecasting, uh, you know, uh, crop cycles, everything, anything that can help people. You know, this is a time for a new understanding. You know, this really is uh, about harnessing the power of cycles to make the world a better place. And, uh, you know, geopolitical uh, cycles are very strong as well. Again, we can have a look at those a little later. But really, we just want to get a growing awareness of the cycles and these phenomena and how we can be more balanced about this. And, you know, people, we, we've all seen boom and busts, and these are driven by people's refusal and inability to contemplate cycles, uh, Larry. So it, it, it's very important. We're very excited about that. Um, you know, and so also what we're doing is, uh, you know, we really want our members to be able to contribute. We're looking for any sort of uh, material to be sent in from people that want to do that. We'll consider it for uh, publication. It is our intention within the next few months to a year to restart the old Cycles magazine. I mean, we'll move it into the modern world and uh, we'll put it into the digital era. And uh, also, um, we, we've got a, a for our members, we've got a little app, uh, which is, a, well, I said it's a little app. It's a very powerful little program that allows people to uh, put their own data in and, and look for the how these cycles work and, uh, you know, bit, bit in any data set, bit any market data, stock data, weather data, you know, rainfall data, whatever you want to look at. If you've got it in an Excel file, you can put it in there. So we've got a lot of good stuff going. And, uh, you know, we, we've started off, we've been working behind the scenes. We've, um, uh, for the last several months, actually more than that, over a year and a bit now um, after uh, the passing of David, there were some loose ends to tie up. You know, we've resolved all the issues with the IRS. We've reformed as a 5013C. And most importantly, uh, we've managed to get back a lot of uh, the collection. There's, there's a lot of unseen work of Edward Dewey's. And uh, 
Uh, that we've got back from various parts. And Nathaniel Hansen is with us. He's uh, been collating that. And uh, we, we've got most of it at a, at a, we'll call it a secret location. And we're, we're cataloging that right now. And, and we want to get that out there because, you know, those of you who are familiar with the work of the cycle, uh, Foundation for the Study of Cycles will know that, um, the, you know, the, the magazine was out there. There were several books published as well. Dewey himself was a prolific writer. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff that wasn't out there. So we want to get that out there and we want to get people excited about this. You know, I think if people understand that um, the world moves in cycles, then, you know, they'll have a better understanding of how to manage their lives and make the world a better place, Larry. So that's that's really what we're doing to start with. Um, uh, if, if that's, that's the first answer to your question. Well, that's, uh, you know, they've always been very philanthropic. You know, I've always felt they were very, very helpful. But the fact that they're back is uh, really very important because I know Tudor Jones took it over for a while, but then I think he was just too busy doing too many other things that he wasn't able to give at the time that you really needed to. Probably ought to be at a university setting, uh, wouldn't you think, Andrew, that that might even be the the best way to do it, you know, maybe the London School of Economics or something like that, you know, maybe give it some really good, uh, you know, things that are, you know, accolades that would really make it better. I don't know. I, it's hard to do that, I imagine. But I would think if he had an academia behind it, you know, it would really be, um, you know, even more important. That's what, you know, Andrew Lowe does, you know, with his work on uh, artificial intelligence and all this stuff that he does at MIT. But that was just my first thought. Well, I think, Larry, that's a, a great idea. But I also think, you know, we don't want to go down the road of exclusive academia. We want to oh, make this okay. uh, available to everybody. You know, let, let me give you an example. You know, right now we have um, the, the uh, pandemic going on, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but if we go back around about 18 to 18.6 years, you'll go back and you'll see uh, that we had um, – SARS in, in the Far East and uh, and uh, also go back another 18.6 years and you'll see that uh, AIDS and HIV was proliferating. And then you go back another 18.6 years and you'll see that um, uh, there was a, the Hong Kong flu was about. So, you know, there's a pretty clear virus cycle. And then other people are probably familiar with um, the 1918 to 19, uh, 1920 flu epidemic, you know. But if you go back uh, 100 years from there to 1818, there was a big cholera outbreak. And then you go back another 800 years, uh, you, there was a smallpox outbreak. And then you go back another, you know, 100 years, uh, back to wow. 1618, there was there was another massive plague. So, and, and the, the, the midpoints of these, the 50-year points are, are really significant as well. But I don't want to bore you too much with that. But the point is that what we're seeing is the 100-year cycle, which approximates the 1980 you know, to 20. Andrew, we have, we have to pay a few bills. Could you stay with us for the second half of the show, please? Would be we'll delighted. Be right, we'll be right back in three minutes. 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. 
The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus can Contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with Andrew Pancoli from the uh, UK on Cycles. Andrew, what is your title uh, right now? I mean, are you... Uh, with the foundation, yep. uh, I'm I'm one of the board members uh, um, alongside uh, uh, Richard uh, Smith and... Uh, um, I think there's, uh, there's six of us at the minute. So, uh, uh, yeah, so Dr. Smith's our CEO, and um, I'm just assisting him, uh, as we all are, uh, bringing in research and uh, bringing the, you know, the tech side of it together and just, you know, creating content, really, and just getting the... Mm -hmm. uh, the whole um, the whole organization out there and up and running and uh, you know what what really we were saying you know we were talking about the virus cycles for example we want to get that information out there and uh, help people understand why these are coming together and uh, so that's you know so it's great from an academic viewpoint but it's it'll be fantastic to have this there for the public as well and uh, and that you know they understand that we got this big hundred year cycle set coinciding with this thirty six year cycle or the eighteen year cycle set you know as I men mentioned between AIDS and SARS and COVID-19. And also, you know, this 18-year cycle that we're talking about, think about the lockdown and the fear, and you go back, you know, it's 18 and a half years, go back 18 and a half years, we had 9-11, everybody was in fear then, you know. And so understanding mm -hmm. that these cycles are coming in, but more importantly, if you understand a cycle, we know that there is always good news at the end of the cycle. You know, we People celebrate when the markets are heading up or when there's good news and we're at an up cycle, but it's when they when we get a low cycle that they want confidence. So, you know, we're really saying that, we, yeah, you know, we, we had a recession and a depression in the 1930s. We came out of it. You know, we, we got through other things in the past. You know, we got through 9-11. We got through the other virus cycles. We will get through this. And that's the hope we want to put out there. And that's really why we want to have this um, out and accessible to everybody and we want to make it fun as well um but also just raise awareness you know you showed a fantastic oil chart there uh, larry of uh, um um the uh, um the the, the, the long-term history of oil and one of the things that i've been doing and, and maybe we can talk about this next week is look at the super long-term cycles there was a big oil collapse 100 years ago so just like the virus cycles repeated 100 years ago oil collapsed in 1920 and uh, th you know th this is these are the things that most people especially in the markets don't look back far enough so if we can educate people and say you need to look at the big cycles as well but also you know you take the midpoint and uh, i've just got a chart here uh, of of the stock market cycles we talked about the 90 year cycle between 1839 and 1929 and 19 uh, 2019 2020 and um, if you take the midpoint of that, which is 45 years, and you go back to 1974, what did we have? Larry, you and I remember that. Oh, there was a the huge oil, oil crisis. God, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, oil crisis. And mm -hmm. not just an oil crisis, but chaos in the Middle East. I think we're going to see some unrest there in the Middle East because I think people are going to want the oil price up. That's going to lead to a little bit of war stuff coming on. And that's the sort of stuff we're looking at at the foundation. And, you know, just and whilst we're on the subject of the 45 year half cycles, you know, if you take 1929 and you go back 45 years, you got 1884, and that was a depression in itself. You know, there was a, a few banks collapse around about there. So, you know, history repeats, and uh, certainly my work, which is what I'm putting into the foundation, uh, along with everybody else, is showing that these things repeat in mathematical patterns. So, yeah, we'd love to have academia involved. We want to take this up to the highest levels possible, but we want to have the public involved. And we, we're also trying to raise um, funding to do all this. So, you know, if, if any of you are out there or interested in getting involved, we would love to uh, accept sponsorships, donations, anything like that. Uh, and it's very important. And there, there has never been a more important time than now, because, you know, even if we go back six months, you know, people would be thinking, well, the economy's booming, the stock market's going to the moon, etc. Suddenly, everybody's sitting at home forced to, you know, especially here in England, we're locked down, we're locked in. I didn't think I'd be educating my kids from home at the same time as working my business and doing the research. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's what's going on. And people have time to contemplate. So this is a great time. And you know, if we can just help people understand that, you know, after these tricky things come good things, then, you know, we're in a good place. And uh, uh, and the more people become aware of this, they, you know, we can have a better, you know, a better planet because people will will understand that things are not, you know, things are in in an order, in a mathematical order. There is always the the waxing and waning of these cycles, Larry. Mm -hmm. Uh, Andrew, I have a question from one of our listeners. I don't know if you can answer this or not, but is the foundation going to go into some of the cycles out in the universe, like uh, planetary things and lunar cycles? That's the question. Okay, well, that's a very good question. Undoubtedly, uh, th this is all part. Let, let, let's zoom right out. You know, all these cycles that we look at uh, um are ultimately mathematical. Uh, there is nothing in the universe but mathematical points. And this, I'm just expressing my opinion. Now, within this, and uh, you will know, Larry, uh, uh, with the Fibonacci sequences and everything, there is mathematical proportion and everything. And the universe and the cycles that uh, your listener there is talking about all fall into these mathematical patterns. So. Uh, we, we cannot ignore it. We're not going to ignore it. But it is all part of mathematical process in uh, in these cycles. And, uh, you know, any logical objective research that comes in, we're, we're happy to look at it and get it out there because this is very important stuff. So, uh, wow. you know, it, undoubtedly, you know, the, the, the seasonal cycle, the solar cycle, the seasonal cycle is the same thing. So there is validity in all these things. Oh, there sure is. Now, would you tell the folks how they can go to the webinar this coming Saturday? Yes. Uh, yeah. It's at cycles.foundation. So go to www.cycles.foundation forward slash webinar. Um, so cycles.foundation forward slash webinar. And uh, we're, we're really looking forward to having you on board. Uh, Dr. Smith is going to uh, host the uh, um, session and uh, uh, I'm going to present some stuff on uh, how you can predict booms and busts in, in market cycles, show how the long term cycles have come in. We've already mentioned the 90 year cycle. We're going to a bit more detail about that. But, you know, things like the global financial crisis of 2007, eight was exactly 100 years on from the 1907 rich man's panic. And that was in turn on a uh, hundred years on from the 1807 um, Embargo Act panic. So, you know, these are pretty precise. So I'll show you some of those things. I'm going to show you how uh, the Hong Kong uh, situation arose with China and how the cycles in China have come together with 30 years on from Tiananmen Square and 60 years on from the Tibetan uprising and how all these things came together with the virus cycles and the stock market cycles. And then um, Lars von Tien and uh, a real excellent gentleman who's uh, been on the board for a few months now has created a fantastic little application where you can feed data in and and it, it's proving to be uncannily accurate in cycles forecasting uh, clearly uh, you know it, it's working well with a lot of the stock prices we're putting in and uh, other data we've just uh, we've been experimenting putting sentiment data in as well to see if we can identify the cycle so this is very exciting stuff and this is an app that's going to be available to uh, all our members that's online uh, so again, it's at 
um, foundation dot cycles sorry uh, cycles dot foundation forward slash webinar cycles dot foundation forward slash webinar come and join us it's free it's probably going to run for about 90 minutes and this is just going to be the first one of a series we actually uh, you know our great friend and fellow board member Jake Bernstein has uh, uh, run a couple of these before and uh, you know we're going to have a lot more as well coming up well, that's great. Listen, thanks for joining us, my friend, and we will have you on next Thursday where we're going to talk about Andrew and what he's doing. How's that? That's fantastic. Thank you so much, Larry. Thank, thank you, you for having me on the show. Well, thank, and uh, Thank you for guys, being on the show. We'd lo- and we'd love to see you all on the webinar on Saturday night. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I posted a chart, a four-hour chart on gold. We talked a little bit about this pattern before. We hit that 78% level up there at 1762. The high was 1764. Uh, we're now almost ready to break out of those lows from the 28th of April. That's very important because all we were able to do over the last uh, three days was to make a 50% retracement. And if you did the work and looked at the ABCD structure on this, this will take us to the uh, 18th. 
excuse me, 1684 level. And if we get below 1684, folks, we're going to be looking at the very large ABCD going back from uh, 1788 down to 1660 up to 1764. Uh, that was going to take us uh, all the way down to uh, 1620. And that will be the proverbial line in the sand because that will be a 78% retracement of the low from April 1st, April Fool's Day. And then it also will be a 382 retracement from the low that we made way back in March when we were down there at that 1470 level. So that's going to be a very, very important one to look at. So that's uh, that's how we're seeing the gold right now. The silver still looks bearish. It's been lagging badly, as has platinum. We've covered that in the newsletter uh, quite a bit. So those are the few of the things that uh, that look really interesting today. I think the most important thing was the fact that we made that 61% retracement on the S&P, and then we also made the exact 78% level. That that just amazes me that it could do that at 91.16. It wasn't exact. The high was 91.33, but between girls and boys, that's very, very close when you got a market that's moving as fast as that was moving last night. It was really, uh, really quite amazing. And that's what's nice to hear Andrew, you know, talk about the mathematics of the universe because that's really all it's about folks it's just numbers and like einstein said before god was numbers and god does not play dice with the universe so these are a few things that i remember when i studied under albert einstein there at the university of chicago for those 12 years and if you believe that folks i still have a few shares of the brooklyn bridge available for sale now tomorrow we're going to have tim bost on financial cycles weekly live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may god bless